Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the Star City Games Standard Open in Worcester, part of the SCG Tour, brought to you by Ultimate Guard and Carnox Chairs. I'm Nick Miller alongside our now qualified Players' Championship competitor, Oliver Tomaika. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? A stellar season one. Yes. Now you're here just flexing on people. Yeah. Team Mythico Studios representing here. Mm -hmm. And you're playing one of the decks that a lot of people's eyeballs are on, and that's Boros Feather. Got a lot of new cards to play yep. with. Was a thing people were toying with before Core Set 2020. Uh, but how real is the deck now that we got some new tools? Yeah. Before this newest set, I think it was, you know, maybe a bit of a meme deck, a little bit of a pipe dream where you have like some really powerful cards, but it's just missing something. And we really got like exactly what it was missing in God's Willing, which is just kind of the perfect card for a deck like this. God's Willing is just allowing you to protect all of your guys efficiently. The Scry is really important in a deck that has no card draw. And the other edition, the Scryland, this deck's mana is pretty poor. You have a lot of color requirements with like cards that just are costing single color red and white. So a tap land in a deck where you have no real turn one plays because all of your, your one drop cards all require you to have a creature, the tap land downside is not very relevant. You get two colors and you get a Scry, which again is really big in the deck like this. So like these two editions, like really amp the deck up. Right, and the land looks a little under the radar because yeah. it's just a land, but yeah. anyone that played during Theros got to see the value of the temple, so this deck gets to utilize it very well. Yeah. And then as you said, all your two drops come online. Tenthric, Legionnaire, Adanto Vanguard, and then Dreadhorn Arcanist, the card that really shined in Modern a couple weeks ago, now you get to put it to work here in Standard. Yeah. Flashing back, pretty powerful cards. What are you looking to do mostly? Bringing back shocks? Yeah, or... against against the creature decks, you can get one of these out early and then just massacre their board with shock and reckless rage. Just basically take out two creatures for one mana. Um, being able to flash back your two pump spells in the Defiant Strike and the Geared for Battle allow you to just have make your guys super huge. Like a really nice curve is going turn two, play the Arcanist. Turn three, you play the Legionnaire. Geared for battle, give them both counters. Attack, geared for battle again. The Legionnaire ends up getting four counters, and this becomes a three-five, and they're just taking a ton of damage on turn three. Right, come out of nowhere, a whole bunch of damage. A lot of decks can't really erase that. Uh, now the other thing going on with the stack, obviously Feather is the linchpin, along with Reckless Rage and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, was kind of figuring out what the other creature in the deck was. A lot of people were toying around with. Kali Honor Guard, uh, people were trying out you know, potential one-drops, things like that. Uh, you ended up on Legion Warboss. Yes. Talk about that inclusion. Yeah, so Legion Warboss is a card that has been kind of played uh, uh, mono-red decks in Standard a decent amount. And it's always been a solid card, but I think right now in Standard it really shines, and especially in this deck, because one of, you, one of the weaker matchups is Esper because of Teferi Time Reveler. And this, when they go Teferi Time Reveler on turn three, bounce one of your two drops, you just get to play it and kill the Teferi. It's also, the way this deck plays, when you play a creature on turn two, they're just always gonna use a kill spell because you have the ways to protect it. And so they can use a kill spell and then you just basically punish them by playing the War Boss, yeah. getting it in through the removal spell. Right, and we saw War Boss fighting uh, the Esper decks, as you mentioned, last season, a lot of the decks had them all on the sideboard. Yep. Here, you're just equipped game one because, as you said, they're burning the removal as soon as they can. Exactly. And they're not playing cards like Cry of the Carnarium. A lot of people are playing Esper Hero, and so they're not playing Wraths in the main deck, and you just can kill all their creatures really easily. And so when you start going off with War Boss, there's honestly nothing they can do. Right. God's willing, the main protection spell, but we also have Sheltering Light in here. We mentioned the removal, we mentioned the pump spells. How did you feel with this deck coming into this weekend? A lot of people focusing on the Teamer Elemental decks yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, so at the beginning of this week, I was kind of unsure exactly what I wanted to do, but I really knew I wanted to play Red Removal because the Elemental decks are filled with a bunch of creatures that are really good targets for Red Removal, and the decks that are trying to beat the Blue-Green decks are a bunch of these aggro decks, all mono-red, mono-blue, mono-white, and now the, also the Blue-Green Flash deck. All of those decks are just like not really bad against removal, but that's exactly what you want against them, is just cheap removal. And so this deck gets to play two one mana red removal spells, a total of eight of them, which is more than any other deck in standard can. And so you have that aspect of the deck which just lets you completely crush all the creature decks. 
And then you also just are an aggressive deck, which is really nice to have during an early standard format when people are kind of trying to figure out what they want to do. You just get to kill them before they can really get anything going. Yeah. Always a good strategy, week one, be proactive, have a way to beat someone yeah. really quickly. Now, the other you know elephant in the room is the Nexus decks. Uh, this deck doesn't look that well equipped to fight it. You have four to mystify in the sideboard, which we'll move to here now. Uh, how do you feel about that matchup? It's, it's a little shaky, I gotta be honest. That's the one matchup that I'm hoping to dodge. You can always kill them really fast. Like, this deck's killing on turn five a lot of the time when you're not being, uh, when your opponent doesn't have any interaction. But if they get, uh, like, Gross Spiral into Reclamation, or if they have a uh, Root Snare and a Tamio, it's, it's a little rough. But you do have four Demystifies on the sideboard, which can definitely help out. Right. We also have three Gideon Blackblade, this card getting to shine finally. Uh, is this mainly for control, stuff yeah, like it's, that? Yeah, it's really good against Esper just to have both Gideon and Warboss. It gives you a diverse amount of threats. Uh, more removal here, obviously, to go alongside your red one mana yeah. options. Lava Coil, also Fry. This is the new one from Corsa 2020. Talk about this card real quick. Yeah, that, one, that one's an especially nice addition because not only is it a removal spell against Mono Blue and Mono White, it's also good against the Esper decks, which it, the Esper decks are pretty close matchups. The Hero deck is definitely a lot better than the typical control decks because those decks have Ma Wrath's main deck, which are obviously really good against all your creatures. But Fry is just a nice removal spell against the Esper decks while also being something that you can board in against the creature decks. All right, Baffling End, other removal, Prison Realm. Then we have their one other threat. Yeah. Aurelia, where's that coming in? Aurelia is coming in. It can come in against the green decks just as a flyer to push over. And it's also good against the. the uh, the aggro decks because post board you're going to take out all of your vanguards because paying for life is not something you want to do. You're going to board in a bunch of removal spells and so when you're trading back and forth you can just then play an Aurelia which is really hard for them to kill and usually can just take over the game. All right, in your testing to wrap up, you know, what were the most popular decks you were running into and how well did you like this deck? Yeah, so this deck is, like I said, really good against the aggro decks. Uh, you just have a lot of uh, the protection effects to protect yourself against mono reds burn spells and then against blue and white.